welcome to Social Work Ins Lecture. I have some questions for you. Have you ever wondered why some things are called facts while others are just opinions? Or how researchers can say a new treatment works better than the old one? Maybe you've thought about how social scientists learn so much about people from just a few interviews. Well, let me tell you about something powerful that makes all this possible. Research Methodology Picture research methodology as the GPS for your academic journey. Without it, you're wandering around, hoping to find answers. But with it, you've got a clear map guiding every step of your discovery. So, what is research methodology? It's the science of how we know what we know. It's the careful plan researchers follow to solve problems, find new knowledge, or check if existing ideas hold up. Think of it like building a house. The blueprint is in the house, but without it, you wouldn't know where to put the foundation or how high to build the walls. Research methodology is the blueprint that makes sure your research is solid, trustworthy, and meaningful. This blueprint includes a few key parts. The big picture approach called your research philosophy, the specific strategies you use known as your research design, the tools you choose to gather information, or your data collection methods and the ways you make sense of that information called data analysis methods. Now, let's talk about the types of research methodology. First, there's quantitative research. This is all about numbers and things you can measure. For example, a psychology student might measure how many seconds it takes people to solve a puzzle under different lights. They'd collect numbers from lots of people and use math to see if lighting makes a difference. Quantitative research is great for answering questions like how many, how much, or how often. It gives you clear, objective data. Then there's qualitative research. This digs into the why and how of human behavior, feelings, and experiences. It's less about counting and more about understanding. Imagine a nursing student interviewing patients about their time in the hospital. They're not counting anything. They're listening to stories to understand emotions and find common themes. Qualitative research is perfect for exploring people's lives and experiences deeply. And then there's mixed methods, which is like getting the best of both. It combines numbers and stories for a fuller picture. A business student might survey 500 people about their favorite brands. That's quantitative. Then they might interview 15 people to learn why they love those brands that's qualitative. The survey gives you broad data and the interviews add depth. Now, let's walk through the research process like a roadmap. First, you define your research problem. This means figuring out exactly what you want to learn. It's not just picking a topic. It's crafting a clear, specific question. For example, instead of saying, I want to study climate change, you might ask, how have changing rainfall patterns affected crop yields in central Kenya over the past 10 years? Your question should be clear, important, and something you can actually answer with the resources you have. Next, you do a literature review. This is like joining a conversation that's already happening. You don't just start talking, you listen first. A literature review means reading what others have already learned about your topic. It helps you see what's known find gaps, and figure out where your research fits. For example, a sociology student studying social media and teenage mental health would read about social media habits, teen psychology, and mental health trends before starting their own work. After that, you choose your research design, your game plan. This is where you decide how your study will work. Will you run an experiment, changing things to see what happens? Will you observe without changing anything? Will you study something over time or just take a quick snapshot? For instance, an education student might test to teaching methods by splitting students into groups and measuring their grades. Or they might just watch classrooms as they are. Then comes data collection. This is when you gather the evidence to answer your question. Your methodology decides what you collect and how. You might use surveys, interviews, observations, experiments, document reviews, or even physical measurements. A geography student studying urban heat might take temperature readings across neighborhoods 
that's quantitative. They might also take photos of buildings and parks, that's qualitative. Once you have your data, it's time for data analysis. This turns raw information into answers. For quantitative data, you might use math to find averages, spot patterns, or test ideas. For qualitative data, you might look for themes in what people said. An economic student might use math to see how interest rates affect house prices. A communications student might read news articles to find common stories or ideas. Finally, you draw conclusions. This is where you look at your findings and decide what they mean. Do they answer your question? Do they agree with or challenge what others have found? Your conclusions should stick to what your data shows. No stretching or guessing. So, why does research methodology matter? You might think, can't I just get to the answers? But methodology is what makes your answers trustworthy. It's the difference between a solid fact and just an opinion. A good methodology makes your research clear, repeatable and fair. It lets others check your work, helps you avoid mistakes and makes sure your conclusions are based on evidence. In the real world, methodology isn't just for professors. It's useful anywhere you need evidence to make decisions. A nurse might test a new patient care plan to see if it's better. A business person might study which ads get more clicks. A teacher might check if a new lesson plan helps students learn better. In the end, research methodology is your toolkit for turning curiosity into knowledge. It's how you go from wondering to knowing. Whether you're writing a school paper or planning a big project, your methodology decides how valuable your findings will be. Good research isn't about proving what you already think. It's about building a process that leads to true answers, no matter what they are. By learning research methodology, you're not just doing homework. You're learning a way of thinking that will help you in school, work and life. So, next time you see a research claim or start your own study, look at the methodology behind it. I hope this lecture might have helped you. For more details, visit our website www.socialworkin.com. Thank you. For more